Okay, so I'm at my next stop of the day and I am looking at another drainage and erosion control problem and this is on a relatively new house built in 2014 and it's in an older neighborhood in the Atlanta area um, but they probably have torn down an old house and then they put up this brand new house and I want to go through some of the reasons that these problems became evident and what the solutions for them are. First of all, you'll see behind me is a brand new section of concrete. Uh, the homeowner explained that this concrete had been heaving and it's evident as we walk around to the back of the retaining wall why that is, but the problem first arose because the edge of this concrete right here was lifted up several inches and the back had dropped. And the first thing that comes to mind when I see something like that is improper compaction because there's a retaining wall that is go, runs behind this driveway and the tendency for a builder to just dump dirt in there, kind of run over it with a machine and call that good compaction is fairly common and you see that a lot where they're not actually getting in here with vibratory compaction equipment, either drive on or walk behind vibratory compaction equipment. They're just coming in and they think, well, I drove my bobcat over it 20 times, so it's got to be compacted, right? And that's not right. And of course, like I said, the home was built in 2014, so it's beyond the warranty. So a lot of these poorly compacted projects do outlast the one year warranty that comes with the home just long enough for the builder to really be off the hook, so to speak, and the homeowner to hold, bear the responsibility of repairing this. So the first thing that I noticed when I started walking around the backyard uh, with this client of ours is this first dead man and I've talked about dead men in retaining walls before and how they are used to anchor the wall and how they should be tied together in the behind the wall and the part that you don't see so what I cannot see is how far back into the ground this dead man goes and whether or not it has a T on it now during the course of doing some of our repairs we're going to be able to find that out but my guess is since this one is crooked, it's actually pitching backwards towards the wall. That tells me that settling behind this wall has occurred and it's now dropping, causing this to pitch upward. And that's just the first problem that I noticed. It's not that severe because the wall is pretty short in this area and it's pretty easy to repair. But as I start to walk around the wall, I do notice something at this back corner that is more troubling to me, and it's this. And, one, and the question came up on this gap that you see that's cut down here. And sometimes you will see shrinkage. This is pressure treated lumber. Pressure treated lumber has a fairly high shrinkage rate, so it can shrink. But here's the evidence that tells me this is not shrinkage as much as it is a potential wall failure. If you look down, all of these are about the same distance apart, roughly an inch, inch and a quarter in width which means the separation has occurred uniformly across from the top of the wall to the bottom of the wall. Then I go to the other side where this connects and I see the exact same thing. Separation that is uniform across each of these joints. So that tells me since these separations are the same, the wood is not shrinking, this wall is pulling apart. This wall is technically considered a failing wall. And then I go down to the other side here and I see a very similar situation with these separations occurring as we go down the wall. So the proper repair, and I'm standing on a hillside, so excuse me if the phone kind of shakes a little bit, trying not to fall at the same time, or say any swear words in, uh, as I jump, but the proper solution for this is to tear down this portion of the wall and rebuild it. There's a lot of band-aid solutions that we can come up with. We can drive in large posts here, anchor them deep into the ground in concrete to support this wall, screw the whole thing together, and that might very likely work just fine. But I can tell you with certainty that tearing down this portion of the wall is going to fix this problem the correct way, and then it's going to give us an opportunity to identify what the heck is happening? Because right behind me, right here, that bright white spot, that's where the concrete was heaving in replaced. So my guess is there's a ton of water shedding off this property that allowed this concrete to shift and move due to improper compaction. Water, water went down that first crack and underneath the concrete and, uh, and settled behind this wall. All that weight, all that hydrostatic pressure pushed on this wall. I'm guessing when we tear down this wall, we're not gonna see very good drainage. That's gonna be our opportunity to go in 
add uh, 57 wash drainage stone to get a French drain behind the wall, a four inch perforated pipe, and make sure that everything is working correctly. So that brings us to the second area of this home, this middle terraced area. And there's something really unique and really interesting going on in this second area. So I want to point that out to you. What's happening here, and I'll 